uh, I would say it half may mandatory. It it may it mandatory uh, for those who missed the class, but it's very desirable. I, I encourage if if you may you to yes to submit. Okay. Uh, and just let, let's leave uh, organizational questions for later. Uh, let me change view to my own picture. And uh, usually we start with quiz. So our topic today is uh, uh, gradient descent and Newton. So. <laughs> Here is a quiz. It was part part of the. Lecture. I hope you you see well. Yes. So, uh, if I have a system of equations uh, of uh, kind of L D L tra transpose L is lo lower triangular, uh, triangular, and D diagonal. So such system uh, matrix multiplied by x equal b. Uh, what is a good efficient way to solve it if you already have those three, those two matrices, L and, and D? So you can start working. Uh, any 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 question regarding the quiz? Okay. So then I pause the recording. Uh, so we continue with our lesson. Uh, so the topic today is uh, we continue with multi-dimensional optimization methods based on line search. So we will have a, a steepest descent. Uh, and uh, afterwards, we will talk about new, new Newton method and solve some examples. So I remind you very briefly, uh, the steepest descent. Uh, we, we, we are on, on this example from the lecture, we minimize, for example, here a function of two variables we are staying at some point. And go in direction of minus gradient, which is orthogonal to the level line, uh, to the level set, you may say, in more general situation, and do some uh, one dimensional optimization, more or less exact, uh, and then uh, compute new gradient and so on. And we told that those methods are zigzagging if. Uh, the function is as uh, elongated values, uh, values, value. Uh, uh, so, and uh, there is a even formula for uh, convergence rates, linear, so called linear convergence rates, when uh, discrepancy between the current function value and the optimal is uh, like uh, some co coefficient smaller than one multiplied uh, by discrepancy the same discrepancy at previous step and we also <coughs> told that this uh, linear uh, coefficient uh, the rate of convergence de depends on uh, maximal and minimal eigenvalue of the Hessian matrix, and here is the formula. So, and and here is the approximate formula. Uh, actually, I think that I have a small mistake here. There should be a coefficient. Is somebody with me? Yes, I saw on the. Uh, so, uh, the, this is first uh, exercise. Small uh, exercise for everybody. Uh, there is a mistake in this formula. <laughs> Please uh, uh, tell me 
when lambda uh, when lambda minimum is small uh, comparing to the lambda maximum uh, what should be the right formula and I give you even hint uh, you know you, you you can build linear model of this formula of this uh, expression Taylor uh, expansion uh, yes uh, Taylor expansion of the first order around the point where uh, around the point around the right point okay uh, so so where, uh, around the point where lambda minimum is zero so this expression is one yes <coughs> and uh, tell uh, tell me and everybody what will be the right formula here and uh, by the way I see that people raise your hands but it's not easy for me to interact in the right and way yeah I, I allow you just say uh, anything you want with voice you have not too many people so if you rose your hand and want to, to say something just say it now participants so we, we expand it around zero uh, you mean lambda mean is actually zero so yeah yeah kappa, right it's yes, the kappa yeah. or theta around the lambda mean equals zero yes around this point and if you have a right expression please uh, let us know and even i will let you share, share your screen and show us right stuff so this is our first exercise to find mistakes in the lecture and if you will like if you will find more mistakes in the lecture i I, I may give I don't I'm not obliged but I may give small bonuses for so for those who who do it okay if anybody is ready just say it with your voice so we need the compute derivative of this expression yes <coughs> I see three uh, three hands up. Is it is it saying that you want to show us, or it's something else? Now only two hands are up. Sri and uh, Guy have hands up. So did uh, did anybody compute the derivative of this formula already? Sri and Guy, did, did you do this already? I see your hands up. Oh, no, sorry. It's on the phone. Uh, just put them down. Just put your hands down in this case. I resume recording and only say roughly when all this ratio is about one I think that contribution of lambda minimum in the numerator 
gives uh, my, minus one to derivative and in denominator is another minus one and the square is uh, multiplying everything by two so uh, my guess is that we, we need four we need four here uh, how I can put annotations and I put four here yes we need four here and we will go forward uh, to next slide okay I don't yes, know. yes we have uh, we have some expression and the denominator and the denominator of this uh, expansion all of them becomes one you say? I, I I I expect you to do Taylor expansion of the whole expression. I, I did it by hand waving and I think I did it right. But if you want to do it formally, you just compute derivative of this expression with respect to lambda mean uh, to lambda mean and uh, substitute it to linear Taylor expansion. And uh, my guess is that you will get four and I leave it for your homework because we have uh, other stuff to dis dis discuss. I re remove it now. Or maybe I will save and then uh, remove. Clear all the all drawings. And, uh, and continue. Okay. And there was uh, even an uh, example in the lecture when uh, condition number ratio between lambda max and lambda min is around 1000. We have a convergence rate which is very close to one. In, uh, with our cor correction, it should be 0, 0,996, uh, I guess. And the opposite example when uh, Condition number is one. Uh, in quadratic case, the uh, uh, level line will be just a circle, and gradients will look uh, exactly to the center. So, in one step, we will get uh, accurate solution. Okay, and now we will, uh, and and then we will talk that Newton method alleviates this difficulty of gradient de descent. And now we will move to our class uh, exercise. And the good thing about class exercises in uh, our course, just where do I have, ah, okay, I flip to my view, uh, that we actually consider examples from your homework. So let's uh, look at the so-called Rosenbrock function which is function of n variables and general formula is written here, but we don't need general formula today. We will uh, uh, look at two dimensional example when we have only two variables. And here is a formula for two dimension. It's 100 uh, x2 minus x1 squared squared plus one minus uh, x1 squared. Uh, as we see, this expression is uh, non-negative. Yes, it's sum of two squares. And the I ask question, so the, the minimal value, value may be only zero, yes? So when this expression gets zero, zero please tell me. The next, next uh, question, one, one. Yes, because I start from the second term, it's easier, yes? The second term is zero when x1 is equal to one. <coughs> and the first term when x2 is equal to x1 squared, so it's the same. So it has a minimal value in the point one, one. So in this plot, we see it. Yes, I see, I take one in one variable and one in another variable. So the minimal value is in dark blue here in this plot and large values are in red. And, and you see that uh, uh, this is a 
relatively complicated function. So it's really as narrow value, uh, valley, narrow valley in, uh, in the shape, like people say, banana, banana function. Uh, so it, it is a rather ill-conditioned. Ill and what we will do now, <coughs> uh, we will uh, de derive expression first for gradient, it's technical, but mainly for Hessian of this formula with two variables, it's e enough. And then I will ask you to compute eigenvalues of Hessian and uh, uh, see what is uh, condition uh, number, and we will see how fast uh, gradient descent is converging for this function. So you can start working. So the first mission is uh, uh, derive uh, gradient and Hessian uh, for the uh, expression for gradient and Hessian for this function and uh, show it to everybody and they evaluate it uh, <coughs> at the solution point one one. What it will be numerically, vector of gradient. Ah, vector of gradient should be zero, yes. And uh, Hessian matrix. Okay, you can start working or any questions if you have now. It's a good point to ask. Okay, then just. We need to calculate the Hessian on a specific point. You, you should uh, write down expression for Hessian, yes, and calculate it numerically at the point one one at the minimum. Okay, thank you. Well, please. Okay. Uh, Ori, we, 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 we are with you. Okay, so I first derived according to x1 and x2 um, and got um, these two values and you can see that at the point of 1 1 it's the gradient to zero okay. and then yes yes and then I derived the first term by another x1 and by x2 and got these two terms and derived the second term by x1 and x2 as well and got these two terms. And I just um, substituted the 1, 1 and got uh, this um, SEN. Mm -hmm. And then I did, I tried to find the eigenvalues by- uh, Okay, uh, you did everything I asked. Oh, only, okay, oh, just- Sorry. Sure. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just did the, the eigenvalues by um, a minus lambda i um, and got this just, polynomial. Uh, just, uh, just a second, uh, uh, Ori. Mm -hmm. just, just a second. Uh, first of all, I will turn on my video and probably you will see. Uh, one second. Okay, um, so what you remind us how to uh, how to find uh, eigenvalues of a matrix? Yes. Oh, okay. So to find the eigenvalues of a matrix A, you find uh, um, um, so you say that the determinant yeah. of A minus lambda i should be zero. Zero. Where from it follows? Um, yeah, so I why? did. I'm oh, sorry? Why? Oh, why? Because um, you say that a v, if a v equals lambda v and you, um, you move the lambda v to the other side, you get a minus lambda i times v equals zero and it's and there's only a solution if the, the term, if a minus lambda i is, um, if the determinant is zero, it means that there are also, there are solutions to this. Yes, um, thank you very much. It's very important to remind to people because 
people don't work with finding uh, eigenvalues every day. Yes, we <laughs> need to refresh in, in the memory. Thank you very much. So we we, uh, we say that uh, determinant of this matrix uh, Hessian minus uh, lambda i should be zero. Yes, so you should compute. Uh, this determinant yes this what you did yes and i got um these two uh, um solutions and then i just put them in the um, one minus four divided by theta and i got okay. around uh, 0 0.998 okay uh, thank you very much uh, any question any comment about this other participants. Can you say again the um, equation for C? Uh, equation for eigenvalue? No, the C, the um, 0998. Ah, just second, just second. Okay, so he, he did it very, very fast. So first of all, we need condition number. And then after the break, we will uh, return and discuss this point in details. So thank you very much. And uh, we go for a break. If there is no question uh, regarding this part, uh, or uh, unfortunately, you, you should not uh, remove before people agree that there are no other questions. Uh, but but uh, any, 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 any case, if there are no questions about this part before uh, convergence rate, so uh, let's go for a break uh, for 10 minutes until uh, uh, 5 uh, 34. Uh, so uh, somebody told in the comment uh, that. Uh, there was a mistake in uh, Hessian. Is it right? What other other people got the the, the same result? I have the same result. Okay. The same result also. Hopefully everything is uh, okay. Resume sharing. And also resume this. Okay. And let's uh, let's get, get get back to the formula of uh, uh, convergence rate. So we told that. Uh, Convergence rate, so how fast the discrepancy in function value, or maybe a discrepancy in, in the distance between current point and the optimal point, uh, decrease. Uh, just only pay attention because function value is like a square of the distance. So when the norm of the di di distance is considered there will be no square here in uh, convergence rate so uh, in function value it should be one minus four yes uh, of this value and the, there was a result uh, zero nine nine uh, i don't remember uh, how how much nine 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 four or something like this and uh, the only thing I wanted to comment at this point, uh, how can I, do I have clean, uh, clean, uh, just a second. Ah, maybe here, clean slide. Uh, I want only to point in the comment uh, for small met met matrices that there, there is a way to get there is a way 
to understand how eigenvalues are be, uh, how eigenvalues look if if I have an arbitrary matrix A, yes, uh, the, there is a such nice property then trace uh, of my matrix A is just the same as the trace of lambda uh, diagonal ma matrix of uh, uh, I eigenvalues yes and uh, also determinant uh, determinant of lambda and this is the product of uh, lambda i uh, is there anybody who knows this two nice formula it's uh, like an alternative way to get uh, Eigen uh, values of small matrices. Yes. Uh, so for, for those who don't uh, remember, uh, I remind you what is the eigen value decomposition of a matrix. Uh, so uh, a uh, multiplied by uh, uh, some vector v is uh, lambda v yes or if i put uh, all uh, eigen uh, vectors as columns of uh, larger matrix v I, I will get a multiplied by capital v is uh, i think something like this v lambda yes where V is a matrix of uh, eigen uh, vectors. And if I multiply it by V inverse from the right hand side, I, I, I will get A is equal V lambda V inverse. Yes. Uh, just a second. So I erase. Uh, Raise or undo. What can I do? Is there undo or only eraser? Sure. This is in, in the condition that you have n and different vectors, uh, independent vectors. Yeah? Just second. Just second. I just uh, annotate. Ah, just second. Uh, so here is uh, the inverse. Uh, what was the question? It's not Again. always diagonalizable. Y yes, it's uh, yes. We we consider. Uh, you're right. Thank you very much. We we assume that metrics are diagonalizable, and uh, there is a system of linearly independent uh, eigenvectors. We, we don't get into more sophisticated stuff, but this uh, condition when matrix is decanalizable, de it's rather uh, general in the sense that you you can, if it is not, then even a small perturbation will bring it to diagonalizable. Small uh, random perturbation with probability one will make it diagonalizable. Okay, so and uh, what will be trace of a this is a trace of this product v lambda v inverse and we know what can we do with trace we we, we can do a circular shift and and under trace we can put this v inverse here and V inverse V, it cancels, is, uh, we, we get this nice formula, trace lambda. So this is the first formula. And uh, what will be the, the second one? Uh, determinant. 
Uh, again, we use this uh, eigenvalue decomposition of V lambda V inverse. And the nice property of determinant is that the uh, determinant of product is a product of determinants. So, so it's uh, that V. Uh, sorry. Again, I need to find the eraser. Oops. And now again, my line. The line is too bold for me. Okay, but any any case, that V uh, multiplied by that lambda by that V inverse. And you know that uh, determinant of uh, inverse matrix is uh, one over determinant of original matrix. Uh, who knows about this? Please raise your hands. How many hands are reason? Okay. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, those two cancel and you, you get this simple formula. So if, if you have only two uh, eigenvalues, the uh, matrix two by, by two, then I get to conclusion that uh, lambda one lambda two is the that's a for two by two case yes and uh, lambda one plus lambda two is uh, trace a mean uh, some of diagonal elements of a. this is a alternative way to get characteristic equation which you already know any comment any question at this point okay no comments no question uh, but uh, uh, still i need voice of somebody because i have difficulty of seeing uh, responses uh, to see that uh, communication is working do you hear me please yes, yes you can hear thank you thank you very much okay uh, what should i do save and uh, clear all drawings and uh, remove annotation for a moment okay so we are done with the rosenbrock function and uh, i hope it makes you uh, more happy because uh, this is exactly what you will have in your uh, homework in your assignment okay and now we we can come back to our material uh, so with steepest descent i hope that everything is more or less clear clear and now the the next topic uh, i i will just do brief brief review of the lecture and uh, ask you please uh, ask a question if something is uh, non-clear and uh, in the end we will have a free discussion of all this stuff so the Newton uh, elevate all the di di difficulties because, for example, if I would have quadratic function, Newton method is able to go in one, one step directly to minimum of quadratic function. Uh, so it's uh, much faster. And uh, here's the general scheme. So we are staying in, in current point and we built quadratic model second order Taylor expansion of our function and go to the minimum of quadratic model mean equating to zero gradient of quadratic model and this gives us Newton equation uh, any question any comment at this point everything is okay and uh, then we continue with some question. yeah yes yes um it's about why would we use the steepest descent method uh, and not the newton method uh because why, why uh, did we choose it 
because uh, steepest the descent has uh, cheaper steps it has some special advantages other special advantages which are used for example in neural networks when uh, with uh, steepest descent you get uh, to non-accurate solution of ill-posed problems then it may serve as a reg regularizer your approximate solution will possess good quality and that's why even till today in new new neural network uh, steepest descent or uh, stochastic gradient descent some more sophisticated modification is still popular but if you are able to compute hessian and your problem is not very large uh, in number of variables newton uh, method is much better as you will see in your homework and if your problem is large uh, still there will be other methods which you you, you will need quasi newton and conjugate gradient which are serve as compromise between gradient and newton they have relatively cheap steps and uh, converge faster than gradient descent. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, please. Uh, okay. So, and the, we say that the Newton method, when it approaches the uh, close area of a solution, it may start converging very fast. It, it, it not from the distance. From the distance, it may be relatively slow. Sometimes, when you are far from solution, it may be even slower than gradient descent. But if you are sufficiently close to solution, you get this nice se sequence of uh, improvements, so-called quadratic convergence, which is written as example here: ten to the minus four, then minus eight, then minus sixteen. It's enough for computer accuracy. Uh, and then that, uh, that what you hopefully will observe in your homework. And uh, uh, another important important topic, if uh, your Hessian is not positive definite matrix, then uh, Newton direction may be not direction even of the of function descent. So it means uh, directional derivative of Newton direction with uh, which is inner product of Newton direction with gradient, maybe not positive. That's why people don't use new Newton method when functions are non-convex, but use modified new Newton methods, uh, namely substitute a Hessian with some positive definite matrix, which is in some sense. Uh, reasonably close to the Hessian and this is what you will have in your homework again and uh, the way to get it is through uh, Cholesky factorization and modified Cholesky factorization so the first part you already did in your quiz and uh, uh, modified Cholesky factorization says uh, the following if if I want to factorize my matrix A into product L D L transpose where D is a positive the diagonal matrix with positive entries and L is a lower tri triangular modified Cholesky factorization it does two things it it says that uh, I am able to find some uh, diagonal uh, increment, diagonal addition to matrix A in the way that the sum I A plus A will be positive definite, and then I will be able to factorize it. But what is nice about modified Cholesky factorization is that it does everything automatically. It takes as input matrix A and as output provides this uh, factorization in the automatical way that some matrix e is satisfied it's with we are not even interested in what exactly is e 
interested that we have this positive definite matrix which approximates our question. So instead of solving Newton's system, we, we solve this system LDL transpose multiplied by direction of modified Newton direction is equal to minus gradient. Any question, any comment here? Yes, I have a question. Um, if the, the the A matrix is not positive, that we can do this procedure. Let's say we don't do this procedure. What will happen? Yeah, okay. So uh, like, like, like we told, if A is not positive definite, we will uh, apply modified Chulevsky. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. I understand that. So uh, uh, you, you, you say, what if we would do Newton in naive way? Yes? Yes, yes. Uh, just uh, use A inverse multiplied by minus gradient. Then we may easily get direction of increase or direction in which, in which function doesn't change. So the algorithm may behave very badly. It's not a very non-recommended case. Uh, the only other case which is yes uh, recommended, I need to find my pen. So Newton method is, 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 is good for convex functions, you can say. Uh, Newton method is good for convex functions. Modified new Newton method when we uh, when you use my modified Chulevsky factorization and compute uh, direction with this formula, it works also for non-convex -co uh, functions. But there is one more important family of me methods which I don't discuss in uh, the lectures uh, it's so-called trust region trust region newton method and uh, quite often it may be even more efficient than <coughs> Newton uh, with the modified Chulevsky factorization <coughs> was strongly non-convex uh, function functions, and the idea of trust region Newton me method that, uh, for example, we we are staying at some point, and we say uh, our function is not well. Uh, modify uh, it's not well approximated by even quadratic function but uh, we say that still there may be a small area small or mo moderate say a a area a around uh, th this is our current it iterate current point xk uh, there, there is there may be a small area around xk where function is very close to quadratic even non-convex quadratic function uh, and uh, we, we may, may uh, i don't know call this uh, area s some here and uh, what trust region does it uh, minimize our function uh, over x uh, belonging to this sphere not over all x's but over x b, 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 uh, say, let, let call, call it sk yes sphere uh, uh, around the uh, uh, current iterate just with so it's, iterative, it's, iterative, it's, iterative, it's iterative procedure where you select sk every time Ye yes and how do you select this sk you one way to to do it is just try if you se uh, select sk of some size and after a step your your actual function decreased uh, significantly then you say that my sk was small enough and i even will increase it a little bit at next iteration 
but if you uh, decrease it qu quadratic model but your actual function increase it or didn't decrease, decrease well then I say then you say I will try sm smaller escape and uh, in this way it works uh, very efficiently it's more sophisticated uh, method than uh, modified Newton with modified Chulesky factorization but it's really uh, often preferable and uh, in the book which uh, uh, Nocidal, the authors, Nocidal and Wright. Uh, we, we have in our list of literature this book, Nocidal and Wright, Numerical Optimization. And this is a highly recommended book for those who want uh, to do practical optimization methods. Uh, okay, this is uh, in two words about this. I, I will save it for future use. Uh, any question, any comment? Because if not, I will uh, remove now my drawings and we will go further. Okay, I did it. Uh, and now and now we move to the other relative method, a Newton method for solving a system of equation. And uh, this me uh, method, actually what uh, usually students learn in, uh, in uh, calculus, is, is, is anybody uh, who saw this picture in the calculus course or in any other course? Please uh, respond with voice because I don't see other responses. Is, is anybody, did, did, did anybody see such kind of picture or such a pro, uh, procedure? So the idea was, uh, is uh, very simple in this picture, yes? I'm staying at some, at some point and I take ta uh, tangent line. Well, what is tangent line? It's my uh, linear model, it's first order. Taylor uh, expansion and my goal now is not find minimum but find the zero crossing find a root so if I want to find minimum I use a parabola yes uh, let me draw a little bit I use uh, I do parabola to approximate my function and find minimum of approximate function but if I uh, look for zero crossing, so it's uh, better just uh, to use the linear approximation. And this is what uh, classical New Newton method does. So it uh, looks for zero of this linear model, computes function again in its de derivative and so, so on. And this is expressed here formally for multi-dimensional case uh, where linear mo uh, model is our function f of x it's multi-dimensional function with many co uh, components each of them should be zero plus a Jacobian uh, multiplied by differential or increment of argument any question any comment here How do you select the differential direction? Uh, could, could, could you be somehow more close to your microphone because uh, your acoustics is not very the, good. The direction, how do we, did we select the direction? The uh, just a second. I, I will, uh, I will uh, find this the direction. This is the, my linear model for general the direction and then I ask a question what will be the direction will, which will bring this linear model to zero I will solve this uh, thank you very much for for very central question 
I will solve this system of equations, and uh, this will give me the direct. Unfortunately, I didn't find, di didn't write the system explicitly. It's very sim similar to Newton. Uh, maybe I will do it now. Uh, annotate. So you you say that uh, here um, we have a system. Uh, J K D K is equal minus F K. Yes. Yes. This is my system of uh, uh, system of equation. So F F is a vector. G is Jacobian matrix, and D is direction. The the only thing we don't know. How to deal with this when uh, G is degenerative, or even my uh, my system of equation is not uh, quadratic? Then people come to least square method, which is much more general. Okay, uh, and then we continue with the next slide. Uh, Gauss Newton method for least squares. And here we say that uh, our function is a vector with many components. And we say that there may be even situation when I, the, there is no such an X where all components are zero. There may be or there may not be. So then I. Uh, uh, Take more moderate goal to minimize sum of squares of discrepancies of uh, not discrepancies uh, residuals yes uh, squares of uh, residuals and uh, the, uh, this is my 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 goal uh, and uh, again uh, I substitute my function with linear model. And say uh, I again organize iterative process, and then I say that I want this linear model uh, to solve this uh, least square problem for linear models at every iteration. Yeah, and my hope is that I will decrease uh, uh, discrepancies of linear model and uh, residuals of linear model, and this will uh, reduce the residuals of. The function itself and the, you should uh, be able to write down gradient of this expression you only or, or, or already are well educated in the area of writing gradients for complicated functions and here is the gradient of this quadratic function yes and uh, we can equate it to z to zero and find Direction. The only thing you say that is good uh, to write this uh, on the paper, but when you compute, uh, there are special methods for solving linear least squares. You you should not go directly with this formula to compute this matrix in inverted and so on, but just uh, take uh, in library good method for linear least squares and use it as a auxiliary procedure in your external procedure solving those Newton. any question any comments now okay I have a question yes um. The least square we go to the square we usually with m is bigger than n, but we have more unknowns than one. Wow, you you should do something. You you should do. Uh, who uh, who is asking? By by the way, you you yeah. should do something. Uh, some homework with your microphone. Please <laughs> test your microphone and make it work. Sorry. So I'm asking when m is bigger than n, then we go to this square, right? uh not no not only it it may be opposite you you may have more equations than variables you you may have uh, opposite 
or you you may you even may have uh, the same number of equations and variables but system of equation is not only always consistent it doesn't always have solution mm -hmm. so in this way you will get the least square solution and uh, uh, I, I want to add uh, one more important thing uh, the same as um, in in newton method we, we had the option to do minimization with line search or do minimization with uh, trust region uh, you you have trust region version of this method which is called uh, i hope i will write it in right way uh, levenberg Yeah, the second name is more challenging. Mar. Maybe something like this. Uh, uh, so th this is like trust region uh, for least square problem. And this method is uh, really strong in neural network when you have a relatively small network which is not typically for more modern applications but sometimes you you do have small networks which you want to minimize to very high accuracy so this uh, living marker method is a method of choice and you definitely should put attention to this procedure. so you have a quadratic uh minimization problem and you select some area some small area and as we said before we remove the remove the area along the minimum yes you can say in this way but uh, the thing with the uh, quadratic uh, functions is that uh, if, if if you have uh, some uh, in some inequality you 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 say that your x uh, minus uh, xk say norm square is uh, less than uh, some radius rho so instead of uh, putting this as a constraint you can put penalty you 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 can penalize uh, some uh, I don't know maybe alpha is not good let me raise it for a second and return get to drawing uh, you can instead say that I will put put penalty term to my ob objective some mu uh, x uh, minus xk Wow, what I'm doing, XK. Squared. And, and, and if you add such square term to your square objective function, you get actually to the problem of minimiza minimization of quadratic function, which you can uh, perform with linear algebra method analytically. And then your task will be to find the appro uh, appropriate mu, mu at every iteration and play with this. And this more or less what uh, uh, Levenberg uh, marker method does. Okay. Any any other question? Any other comment? Uh, okay. In this case, I would say we finished for today, and as usual, uh, we have class after class, like uh, reception hours, which starts uh, with uh, free discussion. First of all, about the today lesson, 
and then about any mathematical question in our course and then about uh, any other interesting question in the world including uh, ad administrative and uh, personal questions so i will stop my recording pause or stop uh, i will pause